Hello and welcome back. This is a long awaited video. I've been meaning to do this for a while, but um, the weather's just been pretty good and uh, I've been busy with other projects outside. And today, with it being a bit, a bit wet and miserable, I thought I might as well get it done today. So, anyway, this is the 12 volt lithium ion battery pack that I've been using, which I built um, a few months ago. I wanted to just give you a bit of a, a bit of a show of it to see what I've done and how I've done it. Um, there's probably better ways of building this, uh, but this is how I've done it, using the components that I'd already had. I didn't want to spend any more money. Um, these are components from previous battery pack um, projects that I've made and leftover bits from the camper van. So I thought I might as well just use these. So, uh, so here we go. Now, you probably recognize this ammo box. They call them ammo boxes. We don't use them as ammo boxes over here. We don't have ammunition. But um, this was previously a solar generator uh, in the form of inside the lid. There's the white plastic shelf with the solar charger controller and, uh, and the outlets. And it was, for what it was, it was kind of like a self-contained waterproof uh, sort of casing. Um, so I've gone for a slightly different style because the battery is slightly larger on here than the previous batches were and uh, I wanted more more outlets and more inputs so um, I've decided to put everything on the outside on the basis that it doesn't really get wet anyway it's not really an outdoorsy type battery pack yeah you take it camping um, take it for outdoor use but you know what if it's going to rain they're going to cover it just like they would any radio equipment that's plugged into it so here we go. So yeah, so this is a 12 volt or 12.8 volt lithium ion 30 amp power battery pack. Um, I built this uh, because the Jackery 240 that I that I have doesn't quite give me enough power, and I wanted a little bit more power. And this seemed uh, kind of to be the obvious choice, bearing in mind I've got most of these components anyway. So, so let's start by having a look to see exactly what we've got. I'm going to show you the inside in a little while, but we're going to start off with the outside. So the idea is that everything is built into here that you're going to need. It's got a built-in inverter that uh, powers those two uh, 240 volts. Uh, that's a solar input, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, everything's controlled by this main master switch on the top. So I'm running a Victron... Um, solar charger MPPT controller inside and when that's permanently connected to the battery it's going to be taking a draw uh, it's going to be draining the battery which I didn't want um, so I've run everything through this one switch so everything is completely isolated once this is uh, switched off so to start off with we turn the device on by clicking that button there and all this is done at the moment now is just powered up the solar charger controller. Um, and it's now providing access to all these other switches. Um, everything else is, is kind of dead on it. So to turn on the two uh, 12 volt accessory sockets or cigarette lighter sockets uh, and this little uh, twin USB output, you turn on this one main switch here. That lights up. This is now giving you a voltage display. Uh, it's showing I've got 13.2 volts, and these two uh, 12 volt outputs are now live. Um, what that's also done is uh, provided uh, power to the little uh, 30 amp Anderson power poles at the top. They're they're useful because I use um, a lot of radio equipment that requires uh, Anderson power pole. So I wanted to be able to include those on the top there. Um, this I got from Amazon, these sockets. Um, and I'm not, I'm not that impressed. You have to provide your own power pole, Anderson uh, connectors to go inside, um, which is fair enough. But then this very flimsy lid, which is clearly made on a cheap press system, it doesn't hold the, the flap down. So it's, it's pointless. Uh, and it's very difficult to actually tighten this up, especially with this kind of rubber grommet that's, that's attached to there. So I'm going to just take those off. Um, but apart from that, you know, it works well. It holds the, the sockets nicely inside, and uh, I'm happy with that. 
So that's the, your, your 12 volt side of things there. If you want to uh, activate the inverter to power these, we have this switch here that turns the inverter on and that's now energized these two 12, uh, 240 volt sockets. Um, solar charge is never going to be complete without the mandatory LED strip light. Um, this is the one thing I did buy. It costs a couple of quid off, uh, off Amazon. No, off eBay, I think. And uh, you know what? It actually works really well. But uh, you never know when it might be useful to have. So, so that's what that is. And then on the side, uh, by the 240 outputs, we have the, again, uh, 30 amp Anderson power connectors, which is for the input for the solar charger. Now, I don't have any other means of charging this other than through the solar charger. So I don't have a mains charger and I don't have a 12 volt uh, sort of car charger for this. Uh, but as yet, I've not needed one. Um, I have been playing around putting in uh, power from here or to here from a car cigarette lighter um, or from a, a mains adapter to give me sort of 13, 14 volts. And it has worked. So that is an option, as far as I'm aware, that, that's kind of worked. But it, it's never been needed so far. I've never, I've never had to use that. I've always been okay with solar. So that's the top. Get rid of that spider. Um, works really well. It's, it's not too heavy. It's a good solid case. Um, but I guess now it's time to show you inside. So if we open it up, here we can see all the wiring. Now it looks quite complicated, but really it isn't. So first things first, this is the battery. Now the battery um, are fastened in using double-sided sticky kind of pads just to keep it still. The main gubbins inside here um, actually holds everything firmly in place anyway. So all the sticky pads does is just to stop things vibrating around too much. But generally everything is nice and secure. The um, solar charger that I purchased um, isn't Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth compatible, but I had to buy this Bluetooth dongle so I can connect to it uh, wirelessly. Um, I had to buy that separately. Uh, I'm not going to pull it all out because it is quite firmly sort of thrown in. But there you can just see the, the top part of the solar charger, the Victron charger controller, um, which has got that plugged into it. And as you can see, it's turned on and uh, it's flashing away. So that just kind of sits on the top, doing its own business. The inverter is only a temporary inverter in here. It's a 250 or is it 300 watt inverter that I've wired in. Um, that's kind of still within its case. And what I've done, I've just taken the two ends off uh, to put my wiring in. And I've just cushioned it in like a foam cushioning um, just to hold things into place whilst I play with it. Um, that is going to be replaced with a slightly larger one and that will be sort of better, sort of more efficiently and safely fastened in. Uh, this is just a, a bag of spare fuses and instructions for the charger controller, which will just keep in there. And then if we have a look at the lid, this is where you can see my, everything's properly fused. Uh, it has to be because it's dangerous if you don't. So everything's got its own fuse in line. You've got your switches and your, your sockets and uh, various bits and bobs all fastened in. It is relatively neatly, I suppose, as it can be done at this stage. That closes down nicely. Like I say, everything's held into place pretty well once it's in there, and, uh, and it works well. So this I've been using to power up radio equipment when I go away. It's used to power fairly short-term, but little sort of fridge boxes, cool boxes. And that's it really, there's not an awful lot to, to say about it. What I'm going to do now is just to give you uh, a few more close-ups and I'm going to show you the, uh, the solar charger. Okay, so here we are outside. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this solar panel. This is my kind of go-to panel. This one lives in the, in the camper van, it folds up nice and small, it's ideal. Claims to be 100 watts, but it's not, it's probably about 50 watts. But uh, that's absolutely perfect for what I use it for. So I've made up this lead that it plugs into. And it's got the plug on the end ready to go in. Now, just to show you this. Now, this is the app now. I've got to try and do this without a, too much of a shadow. Let's have a look. I should have done this indoors, really. 
So this is the uh, Victron app. So as you can see from this, it's uh, not got any input at all. But it is showing the battery is currently at 13.26 volts. So we're not going to get much input coming from the solar because it just won't be, won't be requiring it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that there for a second because you're not going to see it outside. If I got the unit switched on, that plugs into there and charge like so. So this is now charging. Now there's nothing on here to indicate the power. Uh, there's no voltmeter on here. Uh, it just wasn't really necessary. You've got a basic power meter here, a very basic one, and that's all I need. So uh, let's go and have a look to see what uh, that's giving us now power-wise. Okay, so I've just put a load on. This is a little cool box, electric cool bag. Um, that's now drawing a bit of power. So let's go inside where we can have a look at the screen properly. Right, so we're showing here it's pulling in uh, 28 watts, uh, 22, 23 volts, 700 milliamps. Uh, but because it's MPPT, it's actually giving us a bulk charge of 3.9 amps, which is very good considering the battery is pretty much fully charged. Um, 70, 70 watts, 73. So that's really good. I'm pleased with that. That's a good charge. And it's a bit of an overcast day, although the sun has just literally just come out. But as you can see, that's how it all works. And let's take another look inside. Always have spare fuses. Always have spare fuses. I've got some in there somewhere. There we go. Everything's all properly fused in there. There you can see the Bluetti charger. And you can see how the uh, power poles get fastened in. And you can see the temporary job of my inverter there. Like I said, that inverter is going to be ripped out and a slightly bigger one, more powerful one is going to be put in soon. The maximum charge for this solar, uh, so 30 amp hour battery pack, 12.8 volts. I think it's a maximum of 30, so 30 amps maximum that you can uh, put in, um, which is, like I say, absolutely fine. The maximum I've ever put into this is probably about seven or eight amps. But uh, you've got the capability if you want to charge it faster. But there you go, guys. Hope that's of some interest. I shall be taking this away with me on my next camping trips. And uh, it's also, incidentally, a great way to add power onto the Jackery. Okay, so just to explain. So currently I'm putting in 33 watts. Uh, 2.4 amps, 2.5 amps, which is a great, great charge for Vachi like this. But anyway, digress. <clears throat> so we've got the Jackery. Now, I like the Jackery. It tells you power in. It's got you the power output. Good percentage for the battery. And uh, generally, it's, it's, it's good. It's got a very good, clean, uh, pure sine wave inverter. It's a good, reliable bit of kit but it's not quite big enough what I want it for. But if I wanted it bigger, uh, I could buy an extra larger version of one of these, which are quite expensive, a lot more money, um, just to get extra capacity. It's just not worth it for me. A great solution is to allow this battery pack or any other battery pack have one of these powering that up as well. So if we plug in 12 volts output, from my new battery pack and then plug this into charge the current jackery give that a second or two and it'll spring into life and there we go we're putting in 40 watts now I think around about 40 watts is the maximum this particular lead will do purely because of the fact that it's a bodged up lead the proper lead for this is currently in the camper van um, but this is just kind of like a spare, but it, it does the job for, for this sort of demonstration. So what I'm doing is powering the Jackery from this. 
So this is currently putting in 40 watts. I'm currently using 56. So this is effectively only using 15, 16 uh, watts of battery power. Um, so this is going to go all day and it's going to go all night as well. It's just going to keep on going until this is completely flat. Now, if I'd used the proper lead that uh, comes with this, then that will be putting in over 60 watts, which would mean that drawing 56 watts um, it's just not going to touch the battery because I'm putting in more than I'd be using. So you can see quite clearly there that you can have two batteries combined and all the features and functionalities of this battery pack uh, I'm able to use because uh, it's just an endless, at the moment, an endless supply of power coming in. Um, even more so that this is charging this up. So the sun is charging this battery pack this battery pack is powering the Jackery, so it's, it's quite good really. Let's have a look, see what uh, power we're using, or power we're generating. Give it a second, there we go. So 68 watt is coming in, uh, 4.9 amps for charging it at. So plenty of power, working really well. This is a great setup, this is great for camping, anything you need off grid. Anyway, I hope that's of some help. Um, that's the homemade battery pack. Bearing in mind, this system here of powering and charging up the Jackery, that can be any battery. Any 12 volt battery will do that. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a, made, a homemade solar generator like this. You can actually purchase other battery packs or you can just buy yourself an old leisure battery and connect it and do exactly the same thing and you'll still give you all the functionalities of having all the displays and the outputs from your Jackery. Something worth noting. Right, okay, I'm gonna call it a day. Hope that's of some interest, um, and I'll catch you in the next video.